recording now. If you want to hide your face, you can. If you want to smile at me, that's even better. And I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to go to Chrome and hit share. All right. So normally this presentation, when I do it, is 50 minutes. I'm not going to make it 50 minutes. All right, I'm looking on my tabs. What did I do with it? All right, so let's open a new tab. And let's go to slides.google.com. It's a little noisy in here. They're finishing up their break. There it is. Okay, so I'm using the same presentation that I use when I do it live in person. Um, and actually, let's use the chat for this. Let me open the chat. Oops. I'm looking for my little chat button. It's around here somewhere. There it is. Show the chat. So I'm taking the doorbell and stuff. You guys don't have to worry about that. I don't think it's going to be very busy today. But do me a favor in the chat. And instead of talking to someone nearby, I want you to type in some questions that come to mind when you see this image. What are some questions that come to mind when you see this image? And you don't have to talk out loud, you can just type it. <laughs> Or if you're just arriving. Um, I was going to make this the brainstorming session, but right now I think our brains are mush. So I had up my sleeve a uh, presentation that I often do at um, conferences. And there are no conferences lately. So you guys get it live and in person here. So right now there's an image on your screen in the chat. If you could type any questions that come to mind when you see that image. All right, preferably to the whole group, but if they're coming just to me, that's fine too. So questions that I've had people come up with when I do this session elsewhere is, what book is he reading? Is he really skating on that ripstick? Why does he have on two different Crocs? Where is his helmet? That's always a question. How old is he? Is that required reading? Nice. So when we read, it's always good to be able to ask questions. So questioning is a reading skill or strategy that we use as readers without even thinking about it. But we usually try to teach our students those skills and strategies similar to questioning. So in this particular case, and I don't always have the answers to the images because students will ask all the questions. And so if it's an image that I've taken and I have the time, I'll usually go back and I'll tell the students what the answers are. When we first started doing these activities in my classroom, their list of questions was like one or two things. By the time we were done with the school year, because I would do a different image every day, um, they would have dozens of questions. They got way better at asking questions. So in this case, this is my son Carson. He was doing his summer reading before he headed into fifth grade. He hated reading. Um, he was on his ripstick. How much reading he was really doing, I don't know. Two different Crocs. He had the other two upstairs, so why he wore two different ones, I don't know. He gets a kick out of this picture now when he sees it, but um, he hated reading. Let me skip this one because you already know who I am and how to get a hold of me. And we just talked about that. And I just talked about that. So I know that we really try to um, give our students those skills that they need within 
those four areas of communication, whether it's reading, writing, speaking, or listening. And so what I like to be able to do is use images to be able to supplement, enrich, and scaffold those skills. And I think that using images can be very motivating for students as well. You can also use simple videos. They just take a little bit longer. It is so noisy in here. All right. So how are we going to expect students to be able to use the rating strategy of compare and contrast later on when they have to compare and contrast very diverse, very complex texts if they don't really even know what compare and contrast is, if they haven't had time to really understand what the skill is. We could ask them to compare and contrast, but for them to understand every time they see compare and contrast, what does that mean? What does that mean that we're asking them to do? So I start off with things that are simpler, things that they can access, things that they don't have to read, because our readers aren't always ready to be able to read a text and then compare and contrast it to another text that they read because some of them can't read yet. So that's why I use images. So instead, how is this swimming pool similar to those that you've seen and how is it different? So I'm gonna have you type that in the text box, in the chat box. How is this pool similar? So you would write, it is similar to other pools because or how is it different? This pool differs from others I've seen because. While you're thinking and typing with students, I would sometimes do this in writing. They would have to answer it in their reading or writing journal, depending on what we used. It was usually a reading journal. Or sometimes we would do this orally and they would share, or they would think share with each other, and then they would share with me. Or I would just go around the room and listen. We did it differently all the time, depending on how much time we had and their level of engagement. So this pool is similar to others that I've seen because, because it has around it. Or this pool is different than others that I've seen because it's next to the ocean. This pool is different than others I've seen because it has a bridge in the middle of it. This pool is similar to others I've seen because it has a rope to tie off the shallow end. So you kind of get an idea of some of the answers that you could expect from your students. And depending on the age level and their um, ability level at the time that you're doing this, you would grow these skills as the year went on. But being able to have them use those complete sentences, whether they're writing them or whether, them or the, the, or whether they are speaking them out loud, um, you could have them do this on a screencastify you could give them the image, they could put the image on their screen, and then they could do all of this orally, or they could do it by typing, or they could use um, the read and write extension that we have in Google and have it voice type into a Google Doc. You could have the picture on one side of a slide and have the box on the other, the text box, and they could write in there. So there's lots of different ways you could present this. It does not have to be on a piece of paper, although it could, doesn't have any right or wrong way. Similarly, another skill or strategy that we use a lot with students is called drawing conclusions. And as an adult, we know what that means. But as a student who's learning to read, it's very hard for you to teach a reading skill when they can't read or when they struggle with reading like Carson does or did. He doesn't as much anymore. He's 21 now. Um, but how do you, what conclusions can you draw about the way these children feel, these children, it's been a long week, these children feel about the cicada, and how do you know? So I would give my students some think time, and again, it would either be orally or written or however it was that we were going to demonstrate this understanding, but eventually they would say, I think these students or these children are excited because the girl has a smile on her face and the boy looks very calm. Whatever it is that they come up with, it's more about what drawing conclusions is and then the answer is secondary. Using complete sentences is huge though. My students became much better at using complete sentences to answer any questions, which made it easier later when we were trying to answer um, like open response questions and I'd be able to call back to when we were using these. Just like when we do our pictures in the morning, you need to start with a complete sentence that uses part of that vocabulary in it, that type of strategy. This one's for predicting, which the kids love. Um, after reading this image, and I do use the word reading the image because that's what they're having to do. And it also 
makes your non-readers or your struggling readers realize that they are still readers. They may not read the way that they want to yet, but they're able to read an image and they're very adept at that. So let them feel that um, success when it comes to reading. Um, so what do you think will happen next? So they'll make their predictions, you know, if I predict that he will ask for a quarter and mom will say she doesn't have one and he will crumble in a heap on the floor. Carson was a gumaholic, so I usually got him gum, but that was him when he was little. So again, sometimes I use images that are my own. It can be a great way to be able to connect to your students. I started having my students share images by the end of the year because they started to understand what all of these were for. Or they would see an image, maybe in a book or online, and they'd say, this is Brooks, this is great for predicting, or this is great for compare and contrast. They'd start to understand what the skills and strategies were and why that picture could demonstrate it well. So when, think about it, if you're teaching main idea, or you're teaching questioning, or you're teaching fact and opinion, you can use images to be able to do all of these things. And it helps to make that vocabulary, that vocabulary of reading, more accessible to your students, especially those who struggle, but also those who have a hard time being able to slow down the act of reading. Your busy readers that just zip through everything, this kind of brings them back in and lets them know that there's a lot at work when they're reading something. You know, they are trying to activate their prior knowledge when they're thinking about a topic before they read about it. Or cause and effect is something that we talk about in reading a lot, especially when we're thinking about characters and their actions. So being able to use images that can display these um, is hugely powerful. And yes, you could use the same image for many different skills or strategies. It's not like you have to pick special ones. So over the course of a year, literally, like I, sorry. Gosh, it is a busy place today. Um, being able to do this one picture a day all the year long was hugely powerful. What I used for my skills and strategies every week was whatever the lesson of, um, what was it? Reading Street. So whatever the Reading Street skills and strategies were, then that's what I used to focus on during that week. So it wasn't just random stuff. I did have a method to my madness. So we might do two main ideas and two questioning and one, you know, making inferences or whatever it is that you use. Oh, that's cool, Jen. Oh, that's awesome. They, Jen's asking where all these pictures are and that's where I'm getting to next. So one place that they are, I have a um, board on Pinterest. I don't know if you guys follow me on Pinterest, but you can find me. And there's a board called Reading Skills and Strategies, which has been duplicated by people like all over the world. It's pretty cool to see how they're using those same images. Some of them I took, some of them I've just found in Pinterest. Over the years, Pinterest has changed some of the ways that they organize things and the way they label pins. So even though, and I can't click on it here, even though originally every picture had a question to it, a skill attached to it, um, Pinterest has kind of done away with some of those descriptions. So it's not as um, consistent as I'd like it to be. Most of my originals are fine, but anything that I've repinned from somebody else that I put the new text in isn't really still intact. But at least there, it, there's a great place to start with some images. Also, I started using, oh, I just clicked on it. Where does it bring me to? I don't even know what this is. This is old. This is what we just did. So let me go back. Can I go back? Let's go back here. Oh, I see, I've made it a nice, um, I don't know if it's gonna go to the next slide. Do I go to the next slide? Oh, look at me fumbling in front of you. That's awesome. It's opening up a new link. Where's my, there it is. Let's try it that way. Okay, I also use Wakelet. And you guys know that because last year, um, I started sending out my six sites to see soon. I love alliteration. And so Wakelet is another way to use these images. And I believe, I don't have it linked, 
um, Wakelet, you can do the same thing. You can put an image in and then underneath you can put the question or you can put the skill or the strategy and organize them that way as well. You can use Google Slides. It's not so much about the tool that you're using to present it. It's just more about having those images at the ready so that you can share them with your students each day. So you could create a Google um, photo album to store them and then present them in slides. Whatever works for you is, is what works for you. And then, so again, it's all about your students first and your tools second. I know that we're spending a lot of time talking about tools these two weeks because I really want to get your tech skills up. But once you start to get that um, feeling of confidence, it's going to be more about your students first. You're going to naturally start thinking of them and their needs and what can I do to meet those needs. And this is just one more tool in the arsenal to be able to do that. And so I'm hoping that by using images with my students that I'm giving them that gift of reading. I always said to them that if you gave me 20 minutes to go sit by myself and no one's going to bother me and it's going to be quiet and I get to read, that's a gift. I'm one of those people that once I get immersed in something that I'm reading and you try to interrupt me, I'm crabby. And I know that crabby does not really normally come off as a word that describes me, but I am. So don't do it. Um, and I'm trying to get my students to feel that way too. I want them to feel successful as readers. Um, so again, you want to have your list of skills and strategies that you use. Wonders has them. Um, decide where you're going to house all of your pictures and then start looking for pictures. You can look on Pinterest. I use Unsplash for a lot of things, but definitely use your photo roll. Use your own pictures. Your students will love that. Start using your students' pictures if you get your families involved. Once your students start to understand the purpose of these lessons, they will, they will want to share pictures and it's really cool. And then that's it. That's my book. All right. So let me hit stop share. Do you guys have any questions? I don't even know if you stuck around, but I recorded it. So then um, how do I stop my recording? There we go. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>